Oh, welcome once again uh, to address today the issues of fuses. Um, it's a very popular subject. So, as you know, fuses obviously are not polarized. I could put this in any direction. There's no positive or negative over here, just like the ohm meter of a multimeter. Now, a question was asked to me about the fuses, about the voltages. Well, first of all, you'll, you'll be hard to, it'll be very hard to see it. Obviously, it's 60 amps rated. The color blue, 60 amps. There's a color code that we went over. As you can see over here, it says 2.99. That's at 32 volts. So rated at this is rated at 32 volts. So how much does the alternate go up to? 14 volts, maybe 14.5 volts on a cold day. If it and then it has something called uh, temperature compensation, so where it goes down the the alternator. So the rating is high in voltage. The current is 60 amps. Okay, so. Try not to get the both of them confused. Voltage and current and the color code. Now, I just said that this has no polarity. A battery has polarity. Okay? A resistor does not have polarity. A capacitor does. So when I measure, okay, here's the probe of a meter. When I measure over here, a fuse. Let's say I'm going to the fuse panel, and I'm measuring the fuse. I want to know if it's good or not good. On one side, I come and I measure 12 volts. On the other side, I come and I measure 12 volts. What does that mean? That means, obviously, that fuse is good. Or, when the alternator is working, I'm measuring 14, points, 14 volts at one side, 14 volts on the other side. I have no voltage drop across it. So that means, obviously, that the fuse is intact. It is good. Okay? Now, so I don't have to worry about which side is the one connected to the 12 volts and which side is the one connected to the load, the load side, because both are 12 volts and the fuse is not blown. Let's say I go and I think that the fuse is blown. Here we go again. I'm going to take the probe of the multimeter. I'm going to go to one side. I don't know which side I'm going to. Again, if you take the fuse, let's say I go to one side, okay, the top of it. On one side, I measure 12 volts. I go to the other side. I measure zero volts. I know it's blown, obviously. Which side is the side that goes to the 12 volts? This side. How do I know? Because I measure 12 volts on this side. How do I know it's not on this side? Because this is zero volts and it's blown. The one that goes to 12 volts is always the one that goes to the one here on top that's connected to the battery. Otherwise, how can it be connected to the battery if it's zero volts? Now, let me explain that and expound on that idea. Let's say I measure one. Again, I think it's a blown fuse, okay? Ignition coil fuse, whatever, a starter, a relay fuse. I go to one side and measure zero volts. Now I'm going to go to the other side. Why do I have to do that? Because I want to make sure that I have 12 volts on the other side. I go to one side, 0 volts. 0 volts. Go to the other side, I measure what? 12 volts. Okay? That tells me again that the fuse is blown. Even though first I measured 0 volts, then I measured 12 volts. The other example was 12 volts or 0 volts. Confusing? Yes. Why am I doing this? Why am I making a video about this? You have to make sure that you have 12 volts connected to at least one side of it. Remember, no polarity. However, one side is connected always to 12 volts, which is the battery or the switch or anything. So, I come over here, I measure 0 volts. I have to go to the other side and I measure 12 volts. Then I know which side is connected to the 12 volts, this side. That's this example. You cannot... You can never have zero volts going to the to the B plus su supply and the other side 12 volts. So in the schematic where this is the symbol, this is the correct way. One side is 12 volts, the other side is zero volts. See the difference? This goes to the battery. How can you have zero volts over here and 12 volts? Impossible. But what is what is possible? Let's look at that. 
Here's a fuse, okay? Multi-fuse, 120 amps. So you know it's going, obviously, to many, many loads, 120 amps. Now, I put my probe over here, zero volts, okay? What am I thinking? I'm thinking right away, blown fuse, or maybe I'm not connected to the B plus supply. I go to the other side, I measure what? Zero volts. Here's the example. Zero volts, zero. What does that tell you? That tells me right away I'm not connected in any way to the battery source because this is coming from the battery. So once I do zero volts on one side, it's not enough for me to just think it might be blown and I have automatic 12 volts on the other side. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Why do I bring this up? Because this will be a hint when we go and do the practical. And we're going to do hands-on. Keep this in mind. Zero here and zero here. That means you have no connection whatsoever to the battery. What does that mean? Maybe this one, this thick black wire broke. Keep this in mind. Okay? If I have 12 volts here and zero volts, I'm in business. I know it's a blown fuse. Confusing? Yes. But you have to measure both sides. Again, there's no polarity, but there is... 12 volts going to one side or 14 volts or whatever the alternator is remember with electronics when you when you have electronics you have to measure with the engine working with the engine turning sensors and things like that and computers you have to do it with the the um the engine on okay brings me to my next point about multimeters i was asked different kinds of multimeters you see these all over these type where you have to select the voltage. These to me are useless in automotive. I don't like these at all. The only one I recommend, and it's a little pricey, obviously, is the fluke meter. These are auto range. Look at the difference. Let's look at the difference side by side. Here, you have to put the scale, the correct scale. Here, you don't have a scale. What do you have? You just have the function volts dc volts ac and it does the rest it automatically does it for you but that's not if you ever seen the video that i made on the channel joe electron schematics for auto i talk about why this is the best multimeter the fluke go to that video number one you always need in, in automotive you always need a minimum maximum to get the maximum reading the minimum of the reading or the average now other thing is in auto in, in automotive you also need a hold button hold button means and some people tell me i shouldn't use the pen to do this but it'll automatically hold the decimal the last reading that you have it will hold it so therefore as you can see over here if you're, if you're moving and I'm moving it, it'll automatically hold it. So I don't have to keep on holding that probe at a place where, let's say, it's not safe in a vehicle. Let's say there's a serpentine valve, there are belts, there's ho uh, uh, hot hoses or hot manifold. All I want to do is I just want to touch it. I want to touch the area. Here's a board. I just want to touch it, get the reading, and get out of there because it's too hot and it's too unsafe to be there. That's what that's what that function is for. In addition, the hertz. What's the hertz? When you measure digital ma mass airflow sensors or things like that, or alternators, you wanna know the frequency. That's why I say you have to have this, these functions. This one does not have it at all. Any plain one, it might have diodes and things like that, but this overall is the standard is the best. As you can see over here, I have it on hertz. I'm not even hooked up to anything. Why am I measuring 59, 60 hertz? I don't have, this probe is not connected to anything. Because, you know why? It's being, in a, it's being used as an antenna. This is an antenna. It's picking up the AC, the AC waves from the lights and other things that emit or radiate... 60 hertz remember the lights work on 120 volts ac rms but also 60 hertz so it's radiating that hertz that frequency and i'm picking it up 
by these probes which act like antennas just like your tv has an antenna one more point so if you want to see that video you have just go to my channel it doesn't make sense for me to keep on repeating the same thing how to use a multimeter how to use these things look for the channel joe trans commands for auto one more thing i was asked about and he asked me this is a fuse puller he looked all over the channels he couldn't find anything about why boards go bad and i made several videos on that channel that i keep on uh repeating my experience obviously is with printed circuit boards over 30 years obviously they're surface mount as i explained in that one and you could go watch those videos microprocessors doesn't matter what the make and model european asian all the PCM boards, the ECM boards, the trans, the transmission control modules, AC, uh, um, air conditioning modules, they're all going to have technology of surface mount and these type of chips. As I explained previously, these, these, these over here, these pins go on pads. You have to keep in mind that vehicle is being driven maybe 80, 90 miles an hour, hitting potholes, hitting bumps, hitting everything. These small little ones, let me try to, these small little pins are making contact, and it's even hard to even focus, making contact to these pads, which are here. Well, there are thinner pins than this on other microprocessors even. This is even thicker. Those things can to, tend to jump off the pads from what from vibration we're not talking about heat the worst enemy for these type of things are yes it's heat but also vibration it has to withstand it just like an airplane when it lands it lands on the ground guess what it has to withstand vibration on those modules those electronic parts and these are the most vulnerable these type of chips so you reflow it and you do other things like i said i made a whole video about these things just to explain why these things go bad now there can also be water seeping in you have flooded car whatever you can have water coming in like i told you uh, one time and i showed you on in a video and then water is a conductor obviously and then it'll short just like over here had water and it seeps through and obviously components will get shorted out but these are pretty well sealed to avoid such an incident happening. Avoid uh, water seeping in. Imagine you go in the car wash with all that water, right? And it goes under the hood and it goes into these modules, right? Self-explanatory. They have to be sealed. Or there's a hurricane with flooding and all these things. It has to withstand. A car has to withstand abusive weather conditions. And they are tested to the ultimate. So if there's a hurricane and there, and there is so much water being coming in and it is just f flooding that car, that car has to take it, has to take the heat, has to take the cold, has to take, look how many variables that car has to take because it's outside. that air conditioner has to give you cool air from the evaporator, from all these things, through what? Because you might be in Florida under the hot sun, waiting in traffic, you still have to have cold air coming from the evaporator, uh, through the vents, and all these things. So look at the conditions that the, the cars have to go through. So this is the reasons that, like I said before, that the pins come up. Not so much these, but these are the problems. That they come up and they don't make contact. And of course, if you lose contact from the, from the pins of the chip, the chip is not going to be operative. So please go to my channel, Jolly Trans Commands for Auto, and you'll see the videos that I'm referring to. And please try to uh, 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 see the videos of how to test the battery because it's very important how to test the battery and uh, uh, sensors and things like that. So thanks for watching and please subscribe.